In this session, we continue our study of Mark's Gospel. In chapters 1 through 8, we see Jesus as a servant to the multitudes. In chapters 8 through 10, he's a servant to the disciples. In chapters 11 through 16, Jesus is a sacrifice for the world. Four events dominate this last section of Mark's Gospel, which in reality is the last week of his life. In chapters 11 and 12, we have his triumphal entry. In this section, Jesus comes into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey to the adulation and the cries of the crowd, but they miss really who he is. He makes his way to the temple, and through the events of the cleansing of the temple and the cursing of the fig tree, Jesus shows that even throughout his life, temple worship has not improved. He claims that the temple is his father's house and that they've turned it into a, a den of thievery as they've been buying and selling and bartering and bargaining. Uh, Jesus says that's not the purpose for the temple. It was to be a house of prayer. The cursing of the fig tree is symbolic. It's the only miracle of destruction in the entire life of Christ. All other miracles were miracles of creation or restoration. But the fig tree stands for the nation of Israel. And the cursing is the judgment that will come upon those that reject Jesus Christ as their personal Savior who reject Him as the Messiah. The cleansing of the temple, the cursing of the fig tree, are sandwiched events that wrap around uh, His conflict with Israel's leadership and their failure to understand who He is and why he is, He's here. That's followed by a series of controversial discussions with three groups, uh, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Herodians. The Pharisees, it's an argument about the law. The Sadducees, it's an argument about the resurrection. And the Herodian, it's an argue about taxes. With all three of these, there's really a question of authority. Surrounding these three controversial conversations, we have questions of authority. Who gave John the Baptist his authority? And they didn't want to answer that, because if they said it comes from God, then the answer could be, why didn't you respond to him? If they say it was of men, they would put themselves in conflict with the crowd who believe that John the Baptist was a prophet of God. The section finishes with Jesus' question, whose son is the Messiah? And it's a quotation of Psalm 110, where the psalmist says, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make a, thine enemies a footstool for thy feet. If he is David's Lord, how could he be David's son? And that's a question that they could not answer. Because the only rightful answer is that without the virgin birth, Jesus could not be both the son of David and the Lord of David. Chapter 13 is Mark's version of the Olivet Discourse, the tribulation, the second coming, and the proper preparation to get uh, ready for his coming. Chapters 14 and 15, we have the passion of the servant. We see the supper, the Passover celebration with his disciples, and then we see the suffering proper. It's in the last Passover that the Lord makes that hinge between Old Testament and New Testament history by introducing at that supper that this bread and this cup, as he identifies it, become symbols of his body and his blood that will be shed on the cross this next day. In the suffering, we see his betrayals, the denials, his trials, and his crucifixion. Again, the betrayal takes place by one of his own. The denial takes place by one of his own. The religious trial is the charge of blasphemy. The political trial was the charge of treason, as we see it in comparison with the other Gospels. And then Jesus goes to the cross as the suffering servant who pays with his life as a ransom for the world. In chapter 16, we have the resurrection of Jesus. His appearances to Mary of Magdala, called Mary Magdalene, to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, and then to the eleven disciples who are gathered as the angel had instructed them, following the resurrection in Galilee, where Jesus confirms that he is the resurrected, all-powerful servant of the Lord. 